G'day guys, today I'll be turning this R36S into a pocket PC. Let's get into it. First, we need to download the required files. So I just open up Google and type in R36S XORG. And scroll down to the GitHub page, which is by OKJacket2022. You can either install it on your existing ArcOS uh, SD card, or you can flash a fresh pre-installed image to a, well, a fresh SD card. So if you do want to install on top of your existing installation, just at the top, click Code, go Download Zip, and that'll download all these little files here. And then once it's downloaded, unzip it, and you want to drag the desktop environment that you want to be using. I recommend XFCE. It's probably the most stable and the fastest. It's the sweet spot of all three, and you want to drag that to your tools folder in Easy ROMs. Inside, there are two scripts. One's install and one's launch. Obviously, you want to run install first. You will need internet for this on your R36S. And once it's finished running, you just need to run launch every time after that. If you do want to use the pre-installed image, then simply on the right-hand side, click on the latest release, which is 1.0.2, as of filming this, and click download link, and that will download it from archive.org. Again, once it's downloaded, extract it, insert your micro SD into your computer, and I just use Rufus to write it to the SD card. You can use another um, writing program if you want, but Rufus works pretty well out the box. For testing, I did end up downloading the pre-built image and writing it to a fresh SD card. Whether you decided to install the script yourself or use the pre-made image, it is important to wait a few minutes after powering on the device to let the system fully load before trying to run the launch script. If you do run it before it's fully loaded, you'll either get a white screen that says sorry an error has occurred, and if you wait about another minute it will uh, go back to emulation station, and another common error that you see is it'll be a black screen and then it will slowly fade back to emulation station. So once you've waited a few minutes after powering on to load the desktop environment, we just need to go down to Options, go down to Tools, XFCE, and go down to Launch XFCE. This step is the same whether you use the pre-built image or you installed it yourself. You will get a little error pop-up, just press OK. And we are on the desktop environment. This is very cool just by itself. It is a full Linux desktop. So the default key map can be found on the GitHub page where you downloaded the files. But the left joystick moves the mouse slowly. Like that. The right joystick moves it uh, fairly quickly. So they're both just mouse control. R1 is right click and R2 is left click. So on your right hand. The A button is enter. B button is backspace. Y is tab and X is escape. The function key is mapped to spacebar and the D-pad is mapped to the arrow keys and L1 and L2 are mapped to scroll up and scroll down. As you can see, the keyboard does take up about a quarter of the screen. So you can just on the top right, go over to it and click left click. So that'll close it. If you want to bring it up again, there are four little squares in the bottom left of the taskbar. Just click on that and that brings it back up. It is also worth noting, if you left click on the little joystick icon, it brings up to the key remapper, so you can change what all the buttons do. But just be aware, if you do accidentally click on it, you will need to either hard power off the system to get out of it, or use an external USB keyboard or mouse. There's no way of closing it using the built-in pads once it's been opened. Since the R36S does lack internal Wi-Fi, I am once again tethering it to my Android phone over USB. One awesome thing you can do on this little uh, device with the desktop environment is watch YouTube videos. So we'll just go Applications, which is the top left icon on the default install. Or additionally, you can right click anywhere on the desktop and it'll bring up the uh, little context menu. Uh, at the very bottom is Applications, there's all your applications. But for now, we'll just use the uh, taskbar. Go down to Internet, it is pretty hard to see. There's a few pre-installed programs, nothing too fancy. You can install your own, obviously, since it is a full desktop installation. And we'll just open up Firefox. I'll go over briefly at the very end of the video how to install your own apps. 
So it did open up fairly quickly, which is great. It's a fairly fast little device, actually. It's a lot faster than the Pi Zero, if anyone's used one of them. And there's no keyboard, so I'll just bring up the keyboard again. There we are. And I'll go down to YouTube. It's not super fast, but it is very, very impressive how fast it is loading. And I'll go search, and it brings up the top, and I will search for my channel. It's because I don't have ads yet. SL. You can uh, plug in a USB mouse and keyboard if you wanted to, just to make it a bit easier. And A's enter makes it easy as well. I'll close off the keyboard again, just to free up some real estate. And again, the uh, L1 and L2 are scroll, so we can just tap that. And we'll take a look at the mini portable file server, I think. And it looks like it's gone back for some reason. Oh, because I pressed enter. I pressed A instead of uh, right, uh, left click. So that was my fault. Just be aware. Whoops, I accidentally clicked on one of them. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the controls. It's a bit different holding it under the camera than it is in person. So it looks like we're looking at the old EPC video. So again, it doesn't take too long to load. I'll turn... Okay, guys, today we're taking a quick look at an old netbook PC from late 2008 and seeing if it's still usable today. Oop. This is the Asus. So we'll check what uh, resolution we're on. On 144p, I was able to play 360 fine. I haven't tried 720, but we'll start with 360. It's EPC 1000HA, and it's almost 16 years old now. It's shipped with a 160 gig mechanical hard drive and Windows XP Home Edition. It features one gig of DDR2 RAM, which is upgradable to two gig, which we've already done, and an Intel Atom N280 single. I am trying to skip through. Threading, which is pretty neat. There we go. It's not perfect by any means, mainly the resolution of the screen, but it does definitely work. I'll just show the full 1080, and it's H264 AVC1 audio. So it is very smooth. I'll see if we can bring up stats for nerds. You probably won't be able to see it. I can barely see it. Uh, seems to be having a bit of a struggle. Nah, so the context menu doesn't seem to load on this. Maybe it's because it's full screen. Uh, escape, I believe. So 1080 might be a little bit too much. There it is. It was X. X was escape. MPEG 2, 1080. So I will try pause it, and I will open up, or set, change the uh, quality up to, I don't think it'll do 1080, we'll try 720. I'll skip through. Don't think we can get stats for nerds, no, no stats for nerds. Let's see if we can play it. Seems a lot smoother already. So hey. yeah, MPEG. Whoops. In maybe 15% of the frames. Stop dropping them. Seems quite smooth. Yeah, I'd say that's watchable. There are some drop frames and going full screen and... So there are some stutters uh, on 720, yeah. but uh, the screen is only 640 by 480, so you probably wouldn't want to do... Uh, 720 video on this anyway. But yeah, web browsing and YouTube playback 360p, which is definitely uh, crystal clear on this screen, works fine, which is very impressive. I will quickly show you how you can install additional programs. So, let's go applications. And we will open up terminal, which is under... There it is, it was under system at the very bottom. Again, it's a low-res screen, all the writing is very small. It's very hard for me to see it from this far away. 
but the basically all you want to do is apt get update but I do need to add sudo so you need to do sudo apt get update and it's pretty blurry on the camera I'm just looking at it now but uh, yeah again it is a low res screen there we go that's done and then all you have to do is sudo apt get install and any app you want for example VLC uh, GIMP any application really there's a lot of um, applications that are built for ARM these days 32-bit uh, this might be 64 but I'm not too sure I do have a few pretty interesting ideas in mind for this. I wouldn't mind trying a USB capture card on it maybe, or maybe use it for some software to find radio, or maybe even as a little pocket server. But I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.